Hey, I met. I saw Matlock. <laughs> <laughs> Only you would refer to Andy Griffith as Matlock. Well, I, I you know, I don't want to get too uh, arcane. Yeah, his real name's Andy Griffith, but um, now he calls himself Ben Matlock. Where'd you bump into him at? He was at the uh, airport. At the LAX. You're kidding me. Now, that would be a thrill for me. Where... Oh, man, it was incredible because, like, I grew up watching the Andy Griffith show and then later when he changed his name to Ben Matlock. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I'm standing there. So I see they have an Archie comic. I haven't seen Archie comics for years. Mm -hmm. And so I'm reading the Archie comic. He's reading a really big book, you know. Like He's like you, you know. He likes real smart, you mm -hmm. know, I guess. Yeah, he's, he's, he's so, Andy Amaber. So I'm, I'm looking through my Archie book and uh, my Archie comic, which mm -hmm. I haven't seen in a long time. And uh, it was actually a good one, like uh, Jughead. Mm -hmm. He gets a job at Pop's Chocolate Shop. Yeah. And uh, Jughead is a, uh, you know, he's kind of a never-do-well, yeah, for those of you who don't know him. And uh, so it's kind of surprising to Archie and, and Reggie Mantle. Like, they're like, what? A Jughead got a job, you know? Exactly. Seems weird. Yeah, he's like a short order cook at Pop's Chocolate Shop. Yeah, he's like Screech with a squint. Exactly. And yeah. a crown. <laughs> so it turns out they're like at the end they're like Jughead, you never work. Like you're just a bum, you know, mm -hmm. that likes hamburgers, uh, likes to eat hamburgers. He says, "Yeah, that's right." And you know those big chef hats they wear? Mm -hmm. Jughead pulls his chef hat off. It's filled with hamburgers. <laughs> 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 so the only reason he got the job in the first place yeah. was so he could uh, steal all these hamburgers from Pops at Chocolate Shop. Well, you know, they say that 90% of the heat in a human's body escapes through the head, so mm -hmm. actually to keep them in there is wise. It keeps the buns soft and <laughs> like pinks over at La Brea and Melrose. And by the way, I don't know if you've caught the new Archie, but Midge has to extend the restraining order on Moose from 30 to 50 feet. <laughs> <laughs> call in Gavin to Becker because Moose evidently on some anabolics and a little crazy at this point. A little point. handsy. All right, Storm and Norman, it's good to talk to you, brother. Let me tick these off again real quickly. This is all in January of next year. 9-11, Cobb, San Francisco. 17th, Richmond, B.C. 22nd, Medicine Hat, Alberta. 23rd, Regina, Saskatchewan. 24th, Edmonton, Alberta. 25th, Grand Prairie, Alberta. And the 30th and the 31st, Raleigh, North Carolina. And, you know, your story about Andy Griffith reminds me once that I, at LAX, at a luggage carousel, ran into the great Ray Ralston, my favorite Martian, and I asked him if he could pop the little antenna up. He hit me in the windpipe with a ridge hand. <laughs> I, I, I still suffer thoracic damage from it, so I know what it's like to meet a hero like Andy Griffith. Norman, what do you got planned today? What are you going to do? Uh, well, I was going to tell you my Matlock story, but... Uh, no, no, go ahead. Sorry. I've got time. Go ahead. Recant. I thought you had to go. Go ahead. No, uh, I remember I was telling you about how I met Andy Griffith. Yes. So he's reading this big book, you know. Oh, right. So That's it. I say, I'll sidle up beside him mm -hmm. and pretend to read a big book myself, mm -hmm. you know, and then we'll get in a discussion, right? Because right. I didn't want to just bug him, you know. That's how you meet people. And I was hoping maybe he'd... Uh, by some crazy chance, maybe recognize me or something. Mm -hmm. So I stand beside him, and he's reading and everything like that, and I'm, I'm talking to him and everything. Uh, anyways, turns out the guy's not Andy Griffith. <laughs> just an old man. So now I'm just talking to an old man <laughs> who clearly uh, is always, like, uh, mistaken for Andy Griffith, <laughs> but uses it, you know? Because I'm like two minutes, three minutes, and who would talk, who would talk to an 85-year-old man? <laughs> so this guy's just milking it, you know? <laughs> oh, Norman, I love you. I'll talk at you down the road. The Dennis Miller Show. We are joined. I met, Hello. in the airport, I met uh, Matlock. Uh, Matlock is uh, Andy Griffin. Yeah, Andy he used to call himself Andy Griffin. Now he goes by Ben Matlock. <laughs> really calls himself Ben Matlock. But uh, so uh, yeah, I went into the airport and he was in there. And you know the bookstores they have in the, in the, in the oh, airport. Yeah, yeah, sure. So he's in there. He's reading a big one, big thick mm. books. You know, mm -hmm. smart guy. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm standing over there. I'm I look. I'm leafing through a Jughead comic. I see him over there. <laughs> So I think to myself, I say, hey, 
I'm going to sidle up beside uh, old Ben Matlock. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to grab one of the big books myself. He didn't have to know nothing. Sure. Pretty soon we get in a conversation. Mm -hmm. We start talking. And, uh, and I, I find out uh, how he ever solved that case where Claude, uh, Claude Aikens killed. You remember, anyways. Whatever. <laughs> I wanted to talk to right. him. Right. Uh -huh. So uh, take 10 minutes. I'm talking to him. I'm talking to him. He's very friendly, very mm -hmm. outgoing, and everything like that. And uh, it was really nice. And all of a sudden I realized it wasn't Ben Matlock at all. Really? <laughs> Not Andy Griffith? Yeah, just some old man. And uh, <laughs> now, don't you think that this guy has a, a moral, you know, a responsibility to tell people instantly that he's not Matlock? <laughs> I don't know. That's, he that's a good question. I never thought of that. And you're sure it wasn't him? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm certain because he just kept yapping and yapping mm -hmm. and. Uh, <laughs> I don't know.